So in this video, we're going to be factoring trinomials. Now there's going to be two styles that we're working on. One when a equals one. So in this case here, if you notice, there's no actual coefficient, no number in front of the x squared. So that means you have one x squared. So that's what it means when we talk about a equals one. So now we're going to factor these. So there, so our answers are going to look like this here. Okay. Next up, we're going to be uh, factoring using the greatest common factor. Okay. Or undistributing is another way of thinking about that. So our answers will look like this, where that, that number that's in front of the x squared is in front of our factors over here. Okay. We'll get into this a little bit more in the video. So real quick definition, factoring as a verb means to rewrite your expression as factors. Now remember factors are things being multiplied. So we're re rewriting this instead of being added plus plus plus, we got this times this instead of plus plus plus, we got this times this times this. We're rewriting it as things being multiplied. We're rewriting it as factors. So again, when we talk about a equals one, that means you have one x squared. There's no number in front of your x squared. So this style of factoring or unfoiling, our, the main strategy just looks like this. We're gonna find two numbers that multiply to the constant term or the c term or the last term. And then those same two numbers are gonna add to your middle term or your b term or your x term. There's several different ways of saying the same thing there. So our answer is gonna look like this, where those two numbers are just gonna go here. We're gonna go x plus or minus the first one and, in parentheses and then x plus or minus the second number there and that's all there is to it so here we go so here's an example here we got x squared plus 6x plus 8 right so now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 8 and those same two numbers that multiply to 6 well that's going to be a 2 and a 4 2 times 4 makes 8 and 2 times 4 makes 6 okay so those two numbers are going to go in these blanks here so we're going to have x plus 2 and then x plus 4 and boom done now, when we do factoring with quadratics, this is really going to test how well you know your multiplication facts. So do you know these really well from back in elementary school? With these ones, it's going to go super slow if you're still using a calculator. So if you struggle with your multiplication facts, I highly recommend using a multiplication table. But before we get into the new stuff, let's go ahead and review some of the old stuff here. So do you remember FOIL or multiplication of binomials? Here we go. FOIL first, right? X times X, that's going to make X squared. And then we're going to have the outers, that's X times 6, makes 6X. And then we have the inners, that's going to be 5 times X, 5X. And then we're going to have 5 times 6 for the lasts, and that's going to make 30 there. Okay, so now normally when you do this, those middle two terms there, the 6x and the 5x, that's what gets added up. So to make 11x, and then we still have the lasts make 30. Now the reason why we're going over this stuff is because we are going backwards. We are starting with this as our question and then our answers are going to look like this so we're basically doing foil but backwards so sometimes i will call it unfoil okay so to find this pattern here right where does this this 30 come from oh that came from the lasts that was the five times six right and then this 11 here if you look at the five and the six that's five plus six okay five plus six came from the inners and the outers okay so when we go to unfoil or factor these that's the pattern we're looking for so here we're going to factor x squared plus 11x plus 24. Now this is a equals one style. So look, here's standard form. See, we have an a equals one. We have a one x squared. So you don't write the one in front of the x squared. You just write x squared. So anytime there's no number in front of the x squared, this is a style of factoring that you're going to do. Now, because our answer looks like this, right, where we have x plus and then a number in parentheses and then x plus another number in parentheses, I sometimes will also call it unfoil. It's not a mathematical like term. It's just kind of the way it's all like, oh, we're just working backwards from foiling. Okay, so here we go. So in order to find those two numbers, they need to multiply to 24. That's the last number here, or it's also called the C term or the constant term. And then they're also going to add to 11. That's the middle term or the X term or the B term from standard form, the B term and then the C term it multiplies to. Okay, so here we go. Normally you start by looking at numbers that multiply to, in this case, 24. So that's gonna be a one and then a 24. And then we're gonna have a two 
and a 12. And then we're going to have three times eight. And then we're going to have a four times six. And then we're going to have a five times. Nope, five doesn't go into 24. So we don't worry about five. And then we, next we would do six, uh, but we already have a six here. So we are done. This is the complete list of pairs of numbers that multiply to 24. Now we just look at which pair also adds to 11. So we can do one plus 24, uh, it's 25, nope. Two plus 12, 14, three plus eight, boom, there it is. That does make 11. The four plus six makes 10, okay? So that means that our, our two numbers are gonna be a three and an eight. So they go in there. So we're gonna have X plus three, and then x plus eight as our two factors, okay? Now, it is important at least starting out to double check, hey, is this still correct, okay? So with these ones here, we already know the first and the last are gonna work out. We have x times x, that's x squared. And then we have an x times eight, that's an eight x. We have the three times x, that's three x. And then three times eight makes 24. So we already know that the 24 and the x squared match up. Now we just need to add these two numbers. Eight plus three does make 11 x's. Eight x plus three x makes 11 x, okay? So now we know, yep, we got it right. So let's have you go ahead and try this one out on your own. Pause the video, then come on back and see how you did. So here we're going to factor x squared plus 14x plus 24. Now this is just a 1x squared, so that means we're doing the a equals 1 style factoring or working backwards from foiling, right? So our answer is going to look like this. Now the numbers that go here and here, well, they're going to multiply to 24 and they are going to add to 14. So we already have our list from example one of pairs of numbers that multiply to 24. Now we're just looking for the pair that adds to 14. So one plus 24 is 25, two plus 12, boom, there it is. Those two numbers add to 14. So that's gonna go there and there. So we're gonna have X plus two and X plus 12. Now again, at least starting out, I do recommend double checking just to make sure. X times X for the first makes X squared. X times 12, 12X. 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times 12 makes 24. So the 24s match, the x squareds match, and the 12x plus 2x does make 14. So let's have you go ahead and try this one out on your own. Pause the video, then come on back and see how you did. Here we go with factoring x squared minus 2x minus 24. Notice we do have a equals 1, right? There's just 1x squared or there's no number in front of the x squared. So we're just doing kind of the basic unfoiling or factoring. So our answer will look like this, x plus a number and x plus another number. Now remember the two numbers that go there, they're going to multiply to the constant term. That's going to be the negative 24 or the c term. And then they're going to add to the B term or the X term, right? So multiplies to negative 24, adds to negative two. So you could make a list of all the pairs of numbers that multiply to negative 24. So you could do negative one times 24. You could do negative two times 12, negative three times eight, negative four times six, and then the negative could go on the other number as well. So it would look like that. And now you're just looking for the pair of numbers that adds to a negative two. In that case, that would be the four and the negative six add to negative two. So you could do it that way. Or you could look at it kind of this way, multiplies to a, tw a regular 24, and then they're going to subtract to a negative two. So we know that one's positive and the other one is already negative. And in this case here, we would only need one column of numbers, right? The one and 24, two and 12, three and eight, four and six. Now we're looking for the ones that their difference is two or, or a negative two. Okay. So that would be a four minus six makes negative two. So again, one's positive, the other one's negative because it multiplies to a negative. And then we pick, and then we do subtraction on this. So one minus 24, two minus 12, three minus eight makes five, four minus six, that makes two. Okay. So that's the one we're looking for there. It's going to be the four and the six, right? So four can go in the positive section or the positive one. And then the subtract one is going to be the six, because when we add these together, we want a negative number. So the bigger one has to be negative. So this isn't quite mathematically correct, but it's kind of close to like what you're thinking as you go through these, okay? Now, again, when you're first learning these, it is important, just do a quick double check, make sure what you wrote was right or your answer was correct. So refoil these back out or re-multiply the binomials. X times X is X squared. X times six, negative six. Now the inners, four times X is four X and four times negative six is a negative 24. So we got the negative 24 that matches, the X squared matches, and then negative six plus four does indeed make negative two. So now we're gonna switch things up just a little bit here. Notice when we go to factor 2x squared plus 10x minus 12, 
we don't have a 1x squared there. We have a 2x squared, okay? So a does not equal 1. It equals 2 for this question here. So notice all of them can be divided by 2. So we are going to undistribute a factor of 2. Now, this is greatest common factor is kind of the, the mathematical correct way of saying it, but undistribute kind of makes it a little bit more descriptive as to what we're doing. So we're going to undistribute a 2 to all three terms. So our next step is going to look like this, 2 and then parentheses, and then to find this term here, 2x squared divided by 2 just makes plain old x squared. 10x divided by 2 makes a 5x and then a minus 12 divided by 2 makes a minus 6. So we undistributed the 2 or pulled out the greatest common factor of the GCF. Now what's in the middle here looks very similar to those a equals 1 style unfoiling or factoring and that's exactly what we're going to end up doing. So if you notice it's going to multiply these two numbers here they're going to multiply to a negative 6 so we know one's positive the other one's negative and then they're going to add to a positive 5 okay. So that's what we're thinking instead of like adding to a positive 5 because one's positive one's negative we can think that they are going to subtract to a five. Okay. So here we go. This is like for mental arithmetic. I'll show you another way here in a sec. Okay. So our multiplies to a six, it's going to be a one and a six, or it's going to be a two and a three. There's no other options there. Okay. So it's one of those two. And now it's going to subtract, right? One's positive, one's negative. It's going to subtract to a five. So that's going to be the one and the six. So those are the two numbers that subtract when subtracted, give us a five. Now notice here, it's got to subtract to a positive five, which means that the bigger number has to be positive. In other words, the six is positive. So it's a plus six and a minus one. So check it out. Now going back, six minus one makes a positive five. Six times a negative one makes a negative six. Okay. So this is kind of the mental arithmetic way of doing it. Now, if you do like the list, boom, we can do that too. Check this out. Multiplies to a negative six, adds to a five. That's going to be a negative one and a six, a negative two or a, and a three. And then the negative symbols got to go on the other number for the other side or the other column of our list. Now we're just looking for the one, uh, the pair that adds to a positive five, and that's this one here. So we got the negative one and the plus six or positive six there. Now for the 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 negative one and the positive six, it doesn't matter what order you put them in um, because they both add to the same thing and multiply to the same thing. Uh, again, when we are going through these, when we're first learning, it is a really good idea to double check. Okay, so that's going to be an x squared, x times x for the firsts, x times negative one is a negative one x or just negative x. You don't have to write the one there. And then for the inners, six times x and then six times negative one makes negative six there. So now we can check this. All right, so that, yeah, we got the negative six there. We have the x squared there and then the inners and outers. We have a six x minus one x does indeed make a positive five x and then if we wanted to go one step more and double check we're multiply two to all of these and we end up with our original one back okay so now let's have you go ahead and try this one out on your own pause the video and then come on back and see how you did so here we are going to factor 3x squared minus 15x plus 18. Now, first thing to notice is that we have a number in front of the x squared. So in this case here, a does not equal 1, a equals 3. So anytime we have a number in front of the x squared, we want to see is there a greatest common factor. And indeed there is. All three of these terms can be divided by 3. So that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to undistribute a 3 from each of those terms. Okay. So our next step is going to look like this. After we've undistributed the three, it still stays out in front there. So three X squared divided by three makes plain old X squared. And then negative 15 X divided by three makes negative or minus five X. And then 18 divided by three, we have a plus six. Now from this step, now we can do the unfoil factoring style here. Now, if you notice, we have two minuses here because we're looking for numbers that multiply to a positive six and they add to a negative five. The only two types of numbers that are going to multiply to a positive and add to a negative are two negatives. Okay. So multiplies to a positive six and adds to a negative five. They both have to be negative. Okay. So here's our list of numbers. We can do one times six or we can do two times three. Now remember, both of these are negative. Okay. So which pair of these numbers adds to five? Well, that's the two and the three. Okay. So we can put two and three in our parentheses there. 
and the other one can go there. And it doesn't matter which order they go in because you're just multiplying and adding, okay? Now, remember to double check these, especially when you're first learning. So here we go. We're going to double check to make sure what we wrote as our answer is correct. So remultiply, refoil, x times x, x squared for the outers, x times negative 3, minus 3x, negative 2 times x for the inners, minus 2x, and negative 2 times negative 3 makes a positive 6. Now, double check this, right? The 6s match up. The x squareds match up. Good, good. And negative 3 and negative 2 added up make negative 5x. So we know we're good. So now let's do a quick recap here. So anytime we are factoring one that looks like this, where we have no number in front of the x squared, that means a equals one. We have a one x squared. So we're just going to do a quick unfoiling. So our answer is going to be in this form here, where these two numbers here multiply to a 12 and add to an eight. So we can make a list either on paper or you can just do it in your head. Just go through things that multiply to 12 and then quickly add those in your head to find the pair that actually works for multiplying to 12 and adding to 8, okay? And then do a quick refoil or remultiply just to double check to make sure you're correct until you get like really good at it, okay? And then we'll have ones that look like this where the A does not equal 1. We have a number in front of the X squared. So step one on all of those is check and see is there a greatest common factor? Can I undistribute a number? And in this case, we can undistribute a 2 from each of these three factors. So now we're here, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Now for this part that's in the parentheses now we can do the a equals one unfoil style um, there so now our answer would look like this multiplies to a negative 12 and adds to a positive four those two numbers would go there now if you like the video go ahead and hit the the like button if you don't mind if you didn't like the video hit the dislike button twice just to make sure